Here we are on the last day of our really crazy weekend before the workshop. It began with taking off and going down uh, all the way to, what was it called, Fantasy Canyon. Yeah. And then we slept out there on our way through to Richfield, where then we ended up staying and not going in Escalante for two nights. So we stayed in Richfield, did some farm Milky Way photography. And then we went down to Escalante for a night, like a drop in and leave. It was crazy. Here we go again, driving two and a half hours to get out here to Goblin Valley. We're meeting with an awesome friend who's a listener of the podcast, been watching the YouTube channel, and a friend of ours on Facebook at the Facebook Photog Adventures Facebook group. And so he's been fantastic to hang out with, a buddy of ours for, I think, the whole two years. Yeah, he's a patron, right? He's a patron yeah. on patreon.com. Yeah. And so he's been a part of it from the beginning, and we're meeting him here, meeting him for the first time ever. He's from New York area. I think it's New York area. Sorry, Phil, if I got it wrong. I said just barely that he was from New York area, and I said, sorry, Phil, if I'm wrong. Well, sorry, Phil, I was wrong. He's in Columbia, Columbia Ohio. So not Cleveland. Not, not, yeah. Columbia, Ohio. Is there a place called Columbia, Ohio? There probably Columbus. is, but Columbus, Columbus. Ohio. The Which capital of Ohio. Apparently, I am not getting anything right right now. So you are f not in it, Columbus either. You're no, in, uh, just west of Cleveland. West of Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> not going to get it so, right so, even now. So right up on the lake. Up on the lake there? Yeah, so light pollution, very bad there. <laughs> but um, every once in a while, we get northern lights looking out over the lake. So yeah, That's that cool. north enough, huh? Yeah. Nice. You're looking across the lake. You get that really flat horizon. Oh, um, and if they're high cool. enough. If they're high enough in the sky, we actually get them. You're going all over the place, right? Yeah, we're kind of doing a tour um, down into southern Utah. We're um, going to shoot around Moab area tomorrow, down the natural bridges. Then we're going down to Arizona and back up through Zion and Bryce. That's nice. going to be awesome. Yeah. He's talking about him and his friend Richard. They're, Richard couldn't make Steve, it tonight. Steve Richards. Steve Richards. I keep calling him Richard. Oh, my gosh, Steve. Now I've messed board. up where Phil's from, and I switched your first name for your last name, which is also a first name. And so, sorry, Steve. Dang it. Man, should I just edit it out or keep it in? Let's keep it in. So, Steve, sorry you can't be here tonight and join us, man. Let's get out to those spots that you were talking about, and we're going to try another spot that Brett and I have been two years ago now. Two years. June of 2016, yeah. Brendan and I came out here and it's June 10th of 2018. And we're gonna capture that shot by the grotto and everything that we like there and go over to the spots that uh, Phil have scattered, has scattered out earlier today. And we'll get, what, probably three compositions tonight or four. Do you have three spots picked? I have, I have three spots and they're pretty close together. So Sweet. it's very feasible we get all three. I bet we get five or six then with the grotto, Brendan, and everything in my spot. a lot spot. of fun, yeah. All right, let's see if we can get out there without being lost. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. I can't believe I called you Richard. We made it. There's Phil and Brendan by the lights, but I wanted to show you this spot. This was, I wouldn't say my spot's famous by any means, but it's my favorite spot that I found in June 2nd of 19, no. 2016. I really dropped a few years there, a whole decade. And right out here in this area, I sat down and Brendan stood facing these rocks and lit every single one of them with a flashlight. And so he stood out there with the flashlight going like this. And then I go, no, nah, do it again. 15 seconds doing, ah, do it again. 15 seconds again, he'd go. And then he had to go around and capture every single rock face. He went around to that side over there. He went on that side of this big rock. And so I was able to, the nice benefit of it, whew, just walked here, I shouldn't have done the talking already. Basically the benefit of having him light paint like that was that we could get light on this side of the rock that I'd be getting rid of, the source of, and have the light hit that rock face without any shadow. Any, any singular low level light that sits way out there is gonna light that face of rock and this face of rock, but bring a big old shadow from this one all the way over. So 
That's the question. That could be something I'm okay with. Let's find out. So Phil's brought a couple of these same newer lights that we have. He's got some really cool light stands that will jump these things up about 10 feet or so as well, which is great because uh, sometimes that extra height gives a cool effect. Um, well, you're shooting from kind of in the middle, Aaron, basically? I'm gonna be down there with the blue jacket. That's where I'll shoot from. Okay, so we wanna be way out to the side of the hard to film and not worry about tripping. I'm just kind of following you guys and watching you and not thinking about my own steps. So we'll get the first light set up here and we'll see how it looks and we'll decide where we want to put the second light. That's awesome, Phil, that you can go up that high with them. Uh, even a bit, Ooh, even a bit more, we'll... Still telescoping out, yeah, look at may, that. May have to angle it down a bit. Now the newer, they're $30 lights, but uh, how about the light stands? Um, they were about 50 each, as I recall, and they're the ones that mm. uh, Royce Bear has on his site listed. They're the um, air, good, impact, okay. air impact ones, so good man, Royce. So they don't just kind of slam down when you try to close them. Oh gosh, that's a good fall right into my speakers. Huh? Mm -hmm. Sand in the speaker holes. <laughs> it's all just trial and error at this point. Figure out what looks best. So they set up this other light right here. My theory is we shoot through this gap and that'll prevent the shadow being caused by that one above Brendan's head that's making a big big long shadow off of that rock right here going over every other rock well, so, so are your cameras set up where you want them though because I think you want to move closer to mine okay so cool. we're gonna give this a shot see how it turns out and I have some sand to dig out of the speakers of this iPhone crud you know, I haven't mentioned it yet, but this is day 10 of the Great Milky Way Chase. So hashtag the Great Milky Way Chase. It continues 10 consecutive nights already, only 13 more to go. And I right here, Rokinon 24 millimeter again, 5D Mark IV. Those guys are setting up their cameras. Who knows what they're using yet? Brandon's on the 5D Mark III. What are you on, Phil? Uh, Nikon D810. Nikon D810s, so he's got a fantastic camera. So set up the lights, we're gonna try them out, get a few shots, get my focus and uh, go from there. Things are turning out pretty well. The biggest challenge that we thought would be working around this isn't the biggest challenge. The shadow of it is happening, but it's being defeated by putting the light between the saddle there, between the two mushrooms. Problem we're having is getting some drama on the rock and not giving it flat light. And then if we go with some light, we get it too hot in some places. And so it's just a balance of going back and forth with these lights and making sure that we don't have anything too hot and too boring and having a lot of cool like crossing shadows and showing up with light areas and shadowy areas that bring out the character in the rock. Look at that rig, that is just insane. So this is the Star Tracker. Star Adventurer. Star Adventurer. So Sky Watcher Star Adventurer. Oh, thanks to Eric Benedetti. Eric Benedetti. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Photog Adventures Eric Benedetti Star Tracker Workshop. Yeah. I tried oh, to repli incredible. replicate his rig the best I could. I've been out practicing, watched the videos over and over again. Um, That's pretty impressive. My first shot of the night is pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with. So you guys can see right here, this is the benefit of star tracking. Can you zoom in? Yeah, let's get in on the, on the Lagoon Nebula. I mean, it's already pink, just on the raw. Oh, wow. Two minutes, basically, ISO 1600, f2.8. This is the uh, Sigma Art 35 millimeter f1.4, nice. um, but I stop it down to 2.8. It's gonna be really nice and sharp. Oh, gosh. Go out to the Rofuki arms. I haven't shot over there yet. Oh, you haven't got the dust lanes going after that yet? Not just yet. Because he's uh, at 35, right? So, so okay. brilliant. 
Night 10, another successful. We got the Oompa Loompa dancing in the background. <laughs> this this shot right here is a shot I created in June 2nd, night. I, why do I say that? June 2nd, 19 something. 2016, two years ago, we were out here and did the shot. Brennan did all the work we were telling you earlier, but now with two lights, three total with the little lamp. With the little lamp lantern thing. This is how it's turning out. Check this shot out. Oh. Now, I love this shot, it's a single frame. We're not doing any panorama, no stacking, just celebrating the core going over these cool rocks. And the composition is just a nice imitation of the composition I did before. Do I wanna change anything from it? I just decided to show less ground than I had initially in my first couple shots. I like it, I like it a lot. I really think that the sky is beautiful, but now we have other locations to go to out here in Goblin Valley and just really celebrate this awesome state park in Utah. If you've come to Utah and gone to Moab, one hour and a half, you're over here in Goblin Valley, you will not regret it. All right, so Phil and I finished in the last area. And Phil, you basically went through, what, 40 minutes just to get your whole panel using the ball head tracker system? Yeah, I'm still kind of slow with it. It's my first outing in like an actually dark place with it. Um, probably my third pano so far. Um, I feel confident I got the exposures I wanted, but as Aaron said, it took a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh, I don't mean it as a negative thing. I just mean that like someone who's considering doing Star Tracker, they have to understand a pano is not a 10 minute process anymore. Correct. Um, and especially in a place that's this dark, um, doing the fine adjustments, it's really hard to keep track of where the horizon is because you have to have some horizon in each one of your track shots. So some time was wasted, you know, having to kind of move the rig up and down mm. um, just because I didn't spend probably the same kind of time that Eric does um, messing with the spirit levels on the rig. So with going across, you ended up switching to my tripod so that you can do your foreground shot. Why did you do that? Um, that was purely a matter of convenience. I mean, if you, if you look at the setup I'm working with here, there's there's four different adjustments you have to make every time you want to move over for each, each pano um, exposure. So using a simple ball head setup, is it, it's faster, it's more efficient. That makes sense. I moved over to take my foreground exposures to make the... Um, since you're compositing anyway, you, you kind of have some freedom as to how you do your foreground. Um, I know Eric does his before pretty often. I did mine after, but it's a composite either way, so um, it's going to match what my artistic vision was for the scene. No, that's right on. So right here in this next location, let me turn the light a little bit. You can see this rock feature behind us. This is one that uh, Phil had actually set up earlier, saw it with photo pills, checked out with the AR, the augmented reality part of the app, and looked at it and saw, okay, I like the Milky Way lining up, kind of like this over that wall, hitting that side of that rock so we're gonna try and light this scene and get the shot see the rock face behind me that's the thing we're featuring we got our light up here and since we're featuring this part right here we're bouncing that light off of the background and the ground so that it's dimmer what rim lights that hole right there check this out so see how dim that is? That's low level lighting right there. And you can't even see what it's doing. We got to hurry with the Milky Way moving right now. So I'm heading back to those guys and let's get this working. All right, so now it's two in the morning. This is your first time here doing Milky Photography. Expectations met? Yeah, I'm absolutely blown away by, by Utah Milky Way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need to move. <laughs> or pick a different hobby because because you'll just hurt too much not being here yeah <laughs> with star tracking being what he did first i'm sure that's your favorite shot because that's gonna look amazing yeah. but that last shot how'd you like it um it looked really good we ended up you know putting a little bit of rim lighting inside that hole and then i backed all the way out to 14 millimeters which i do not do very often turn the tracker off didn't mess with that i'm gonna stack i shot a 12,800 iso um, which friend Steve had some great success with down in uh, Big Bend recently so I'm gonna see see how I do with it but the composition looks amazing the Milky Way just stretches you know from the bottom to the top of the image and in portrait mode it looks spectacular that's awesome if you guys are on Instagram follow Phil Sisto you can find him at p.sisto.images 2 a.m. in the morning you can hear the wind we're ready to drive back all the way to home tonight. Phil's taking off from Moab. Let's get out of here. Tenth day, ten straight nights of Milky Way photography. One, one down, <laughs> one down, and uh, what? You're going ten more nights? 
uh, at least the next six I'm out here. Okay, hey. so he'll get seven straight right. nights. So hashtag the great Milky Way chase. Join us. Get out there. Don't worry about clouds and your light pollution in your area, guys. Just go find something. Have fun. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Night number 11. The lights on the houses over there aren't too bad. You can see lights there on the mountains from the city, so the distant mountains are actually getting pretty well lit.